Thank you, Kathy, for the invitation. It's quite an honor. And thank you, Jack, for reminding me that I should be hiring BCIT people because they work so hard and they look so good. And I want to thank you all for an opportunity of losing a good night's sleep over giving this commencement speech. When I graduated, I thought that would be the end of my all-night cramming. When my daughter turned into an adult, I thought that would be the end of my all-night worrying. And now, thanks to the internet, I spent all night reviewing the 10 most notable commencement speeches, only to discover three things. Number one, all the notable speeches are, in, are American. And I figure maybe that's because Canadian speeches are too polite, too vanilla to get noticed or recorded. So don't expect that you'll be going back to watch this one on YouTube. Be better pay attention now. Netflix might have your attention tonight. Number two, these speeches average 20 minutes long. And I've been given 7 to 10. Now, I know that kind of sounds like maybe a penal sentence. Depending how boring I am, it might just be that. So I'll tell you what. On the count to three, I'd like you to turn to the person next to you and say, I hope he's not boring. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. OK, now I know you're willing to play. This is going to be fun. Number three, all these notable speeches sucked. <laughs> and so now turn to the same person and say, I think he's going to suck. <laughs> One, two, three. Good. All but one. Ellen DeGeneres. And as only Ellen can, in a funny to hilarious way, she spoke about how she never graduated from any college and having to actually look up the word commencement, which she basically reminded us is made up of common and cement. Ultimately, though, she spoke about being yourself. And in fact, many speakers spoke about being yourself except that not a single one gave the audience a clue on how to figure that out. So, in spite of your sleep deprivation of the last few years and perhaps last night's tequila party, I'd like to share a strategy for that, for you, and today. And a spoiler alert, professional help is involved. Maybe, maybe not a therapist. We'll see. I also loved how Ellen made fun of a time when Americans had only white presidents. She must be psychic, because that was well before anybody could foresee that one day they'd have an orange one. <laughs> she did not foresee, however, that one day we'd need to send our own prime minister down there to teach him some good manners. On a more serious note, I did notice that Ellen and I had one thing in common, and that was coming out of the closet. Hers made her famous. My coming out, and I mean literally from the second bedroom closet, meant that the botanicals and the essential oils that I was mixing up for my own health could be shared with the world. Along the way, I found that helping others was a massively powerful way to get to my own success and my own happiness. And that resulted in the development of a never humble enough three-layer approach to great life. It won't make you as funny as Ellen, but it could save you a decade or two of stumbling around. Clearly what I had to do. But to give credit where credit is due, it was my daughter, Kiara, who at 11, gave me an optic that explained my own path. She came home from school and said, Dad, did you know that every master was once a disaster? I guess if none of you are finding that funny, you haven't had enough disasters in your life, but I'll continue. 
because I once asked the universe for an ego reduction program, and damn it if she didn't send me Kiara, my daughter. So here's a kicker in the age of blogs and short YouTubes and an eight second attention span. All three lessons I'm going to talk about that I want to share with you started with receiving a book. And we all do that, but then reading it. We don't always do that. And then applying it. We almost never do that. And I want to tell you that those three books are the key foundation to what turned into some very rich relationships, a fulfilling career, and that keeps getting easier and more fun as I'm now moving through my 60s. So by the way, never underestimate a by the way, I waited till I was into my 40s to start paying attention to things like that that matters. So I hope that this talk will literally save you 20 years of stumbling or give you a 20 years head start, however you want to look at it. So here they are, three layers. The first layer I'm going to call, find a belief system or a philosophy that's smarter than you. I know you're just graduating and smarter than you might be a tall order, but I promise you there's something out there that you will find is eternal. Much of the knowledge that we're learning, specifically those of us in science, you will notice that within two years, 70% of what we believe is true today is no longer true. So find something more profound. I have a saying, perhaps just to legitimize my existence, now that you know my age, I say, if something old doesn't work, Try something older. <laughs> so, on the subject of finding that philosophy, I can tell you that 22 years ago, I was struggling with my health, I was struggling with my business, and now, surprise, I was struggling with my marriage. So those are my three disasters. And a friend said to me, a very powerful question, he said, so Jean-Pierre, what are you believing? And at the time, I couldn't even comprehend the question, although I could sense it was profound. I certainly wasn't ready to answer Einstein's question, is this a friendly universe? So he gave me a book called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. And the repeated reading of this tiny book, and I mean like hundreds of readings and rereadings, one chapter per day, only a 10-minute investment, has reprogrammed my mind to think in terms of abundance and the alignment of how the universe works. I discovered it is indeed a very friendly universe. And so layer one is finding a belief system or a philosophy that's smarter than you that will lead you when you're not in your full capacity. And until you find your own such philosophy, I'll happily lend you mine. You now know it's the seven spiritual laws of success. $9.95 will give you a book that will fit in the back of your jeans. And I refer to one of these laws at least once a day as a habit. Frankly, law number six comes up quite a bit these days. It's the law on giving up attachment. And why is that? Because I'm usually dealing with an airline or an airport these days. And boy, if you're attached, you're going to be miserable. The second layer. Know thyself. I know, that sounds kind of Greek and all, but know thyself. I mean, let me tell you a short story. My sister, who has two masters in psychology, once gave my mom a book, who immediately recognized as something Jean-Pierre would love. And so the book was shipped from Montreal to Arizona, where my mom was doing the, the winter thing, and then from Arizona to Vancouver. And upon reading the introduction page, I realized that it was... It was a tool to understand my own struggling psychology. And frankly, that of others, noticing that there were a lot of other people with struggling psychologies around me. The book is based on an age-old, you're starting to see a pattern, something really old, an age-old psychology system called the Enneagram. Some of you might have even been at some of the leadership talks where I introduced the Enneagram. You can Google the free test, and in no time you'll discover that you have a natural way of being that makes you be you. And you better learn to be yourself, because I can promise you that everybody else is taken. <laughs> you, 
you do, they, you do get that, right? Okay, so you will discover that sometimes, and this is the distinction between some of your personalities and others, sometimes you just allow things to be as they will. You know, the universe will unfold as it perfectly will. Sometimes you're supporting. You're supporting a team leader, you're supporting a team, you're supporting others, and sometimes you just plain step into being a leader. And yes, it depends on circumstances. But self-awareness will reveal your most natural way of being, and that dictates your values. You'll also discover that sometimes you're influenced by your gut, like matters of intuition, sometimes by your heart in matters of relationship, and sometimes it's in your head as in multiple possibilities. For some of you, infinite possibilities, just going by over and over. You can't even sleep, there's so many of them. Those are the Enneagram sevens, but you caught that at the talk, I hope. For you math, math majors, you've probably now figured out that these three possibilities, times three possibilities, spells out to nine Enneagram types, and each has distinct values that are different from the other, and the ignorance of that will rob you of one of the most important tools I know, actually the most important tool I know, to live a life of integrity. So layer two, knowing your psychology will reveal to you your truest values and aligning to those values for your job, for your choice of significant other, for your choice of friends, frankly anything you do is the most direct access to happiness and a fulfilling life and doing what matters most to you. At SAGE, we've trained over a thousand team members to know their Enneagram for a deeper understanding of themselves and the others they work with. They get to profoundly enjoy each other's company, I dare say, even love each other as friends. That's a working relationship. That's a working environment. So the third layer is have a life plan. Now that might sound early to some of you, but let me tell you, my career strategy was to start, coming out of McGill, with a well-established corporation, one that would teach me how business was done. Back then, I didn't know any better, and what caught the attention of my professors was Procter & Gamble. So back in the days when you couldn't go to an internet, there was none, you couldn't take online courses, there was not that either, you had to go pick someone who appeared to know what they were doing. So I joined the big multinational. Step two was to get promoted to a medium-sized business where I could run a department. So some little chocolate company called Laura Secord hired me to run a department. And step three was to get promoted to a small business where I could be to quite a degree large and in charge. And that was the Eagle Northright people who gave me the department of everything that had ink in it. So that was going to prepare me to then start my own business and climb my way back from small business to medium-sized business to eventually one that could impact the planet. Good plan, right? It was a great plan. But executing the plan was a whole other story. It wasn't until I hired my first personal and professional coach that I found that my particular way of executing the plan required quite a bit of adjustment. By then, the first half of my career was behind me, and it wasn't pretty. Did they fire me or just encourage me to speak to a headhunter? We'll never know. But if you know the expression, shooting an insect with an elephant gun, I was actually taking on elephants with a fly swatter. So now, with a coach, I was taking a new approach, and it was only by the time I got to my third coach that I was given a book on how to have a one-page plan that was based on vision and values and goals with integrity. And I got really good at that one-page plan. And I couldn't have done it without a coach holding my feet to the fire. Today, I actually train coaches on how to co-create one-page success plans with their clients. The most powerful thing I've ever done for Sage, our family business, is to create that one-page plan. And that led us, that was five years ago, by the way. Some of you probably know that Sage was this little mom and pop company that kind of for 20 years did almost nothing. And five years ago, we put in place the one page plan and we went on a growth spurt of 
in only five years. I was sharing with Kathy and Jack that by the time that we had built out the fifth floor of the building we were in, we had moved to the fourth floor, we couldn't move in, we had outgrown it, we needed the fourth floor as well, and by the time we finish redoing the fourth floor, well now we need a building next door, and at the present time, we've just secured a whole building that will be designed to our specifications, things like having a karma kitchen where someone's gonna actually feed you plants for food every lunchtime. So, I'm gonna suggest that the best money you'll ever spend will be on a coach who becomes your thinking partner and holds the energy until your one pager is so crisp, so clear, so inspiring that it'll take you to the place of your wildest dream with ease and joy. Oh, and another, by the way, make sure it's a coach who's living a dream life. So layer three, you get a coach and you create a life plan. Now, as Ellen would say about this time, it's time to conclude my conclusions. Got to be as funny as Ellen. And she concluded by saying, let's dance. And she did that dance she does to the most amazing music, blaring at full volume. Not gonna happen here. <laughs> so, if we're not gonna dance to my recap, here it is. Layer one, find a belief system or a philosophy that's smarter than you. It will pull you out of your darkest moments. It will turn your disasters into masteries. Layer two, know your own psychology. Let it reveal to you your truest values. This will guide your life direction. Your best career moves, your best friends, your most significant other will all be created from a conscious alignment of your values and theirs. Layer three, get a coach and create a life plan. It might change over time, but you will be living in integrity through the journey while the destination is uncovered. Pick someone who knows that the impossible is possible to help you hold on to your vision until you've conditioned your brain to deliver your destiny. At SAGE, we have picked our BHAG, our big, hairy, audacious goal. You're such a, a lovely audience, I'm not gonna tell you how I call it a big ass goal, but <laughs> the big, hairy, audacious goal is a thousand stores worldwide. Why? Because just the same way as Elon Musk wants to change our society from being carbon-based to being solar-based, we at Sage want to change our society from being dependent on synthetics and pharmaceuticals to having nature be our first medicine. And so at this point, I want to thank you for your attention. I want to congratulations. You've just made it to the starting line. <laughs>